Hi folks, today is Thursday of Holy Week 2020. Good to be with you again. There is so much that can be said about the events that happen on this day of Holy Week. I, you could spend a whole week just talking about the events in the upper room in Gethsemane and beyond. Just a, a the, the thing I'd like to focus on uh, today comes from the Gospel of John. John uh, uses a particular form of grammar called the historical present tense from time to time, especially in chapter 20, which is the chapter where he talks about the resurrection, and also in chapter 13. Some people think there's nothing particularly significant about it, but I am convinced that John uses this uh, tense in order to draw our attention to Jesus. I think when John thinks of Jesus in his earthly ministry, when he uses historical present, it's like he's saying, I want you to see Jesus this way. When I remember him, this is what comes to mind. And that is the case at the start of the Lord's Supper here in chapter 13. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. John is basically saying it is as if Jesus is getting up even now and is prepared to serve. Jesus washing the disciples' feet is really one of the most remarkable aspects of his ministry. You know, if we think about his leadership, it is the towel and the basin that comes to mind. I'm going to include a um, painting with today's meditation by Ford Maddox Brown on Jesus washing the disciples' feet. The thing that I really like about this is he gets really close to the action at kind of a, a low visual point. And he's showing Jesus' determination as well as the disciples' incredulity at what is happening, that their leader would humble himself in this way. And of course, we know there's far more to come. What a remarkable Savior we serve, and one who is still in the business of serving us so that we can go serve others. A uh, couple of music passages I'd like you to consider today. One is by Robert White, a Renaissance British composer. It was a very common practice in the church on Maundy Thursday to have music set to the Book of Lamentations, which is that little letter that we sometimes stumble across when we're trying to find Jeremiah or Isaiah. Lamentations is written by Jeremiah talking about the fall of Jerusalem and Robert White actually uh, died of a bubonic plague outbreak while he was in his mid-30s. I mean, this is, this is incredibly beautiful music set to the text of, of a tragic and yet beautiful letter. We really don't know much about uh, lament in these days. The last popular treatment of a lament that I can think of is Gordon Lightfoot, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, and that's going back 40 years, perhaps. But laments help us uh, consider tragedy with a heroic uh, side to it as well. And in these days, God is at work even in difficult circumstances, and it would serve us well to consider the lamentation of Jeremiah. Uh, and the church has done so on Monday, Thursday for a long time. 
in case uh, you choose not to put that on as background music for your prayer time over 20 minutes or so, there's another beautiful piece. It's only about three minutes long by Knut Neistat. And it is a text from The Last Supper, John 14. Peace I leave with you. Uh, let the record show that uh, should any of you watching this prepare for my funeral, go find 16 of the best singers in the city of Pittsburgh and have them do this. This is a gorgeous piece. Three times they use the word of Jesus, peace, peace, peace I leave with you. It's very moving and the last chord where he talks about don't be afraid is marvelous. God bless you today.